Yeah, I was just looking at some old pictures, uh, the good old days. You know, my family, uh, we started, uh, my dad got his first certification, really. That was the early days in 1967. Uh, we still have that certification. Uh, my dad, uh, my dad was welding all, all those years for several different companies. Uh, one of my favorite pictures was uh, one of him standing on top of the Circus Circus. Uh, had to be like 1970 or 70, it was before 71, because that's when they built the tower uh, or, or, you know, the, the rooms back there. Uh, my dad, uh, my dad was a very talented man. He, he learned from uh, his dad uh, mechanics and things, and it progressed into welding. They uh, they moved to Las Vegas in '64. But I uh, I appreciate my dad teaching me what he knows, and uh, my dad's brother, Uncle Bill. Uh, there's hardly anybody that remembers my dad or my uncle anymore. I mean, they're they're all they were. Or, my dad's almost 80 and uh, Uncle Bill passed away. And all the guys that, that knew my dad and my uncle, you know, they probably passed away or they're retired. Uh, you know, a lady at the store, she's, she's related to somebody on the old crew and she was asking me questions about the old job sites. It's kind of, it's kind of, it's kind of fun to think about the old days. Uh, you know, uh, my dad talking on the phone uh, I love my dad. My dad's first welding truck, I know you can't see it, I'll try and post it on the video, but my dad's first welding truck was a 77 Ford. He bought it brand new. He was pretty proud of that truck. And this picture here, it's beat all to hell, really, but uh, uh, that truck, you know, that, that was, those were my childhood memories, seeing my dad always welding in, in the yard, right at home, you know, or uh, sometimes we'd go to the, uh, go to pick up dad on Fridays. Actually, we just went to pick up the check. Mom would take us there and we'd see dad sometimes welding in shops. Way back in the uh, late 60s or 70s, I remember it. Uh, so we always liked the sparks and liked the action, but we never, uh, we weren't afraid of it. You know, we sure we got burned a few times, but and that's just it, you get burned a few times or you, you experience it firsthand and we no longer had those fears, you know. Dad, uh, and dad would ask us to hold this or clamp that and once in a while grind this or brush that. And so through our childhood, we got to see a lot of things. Uh, later in the, like, like the early 80s, uh, like 79, 80, 81, I remember my brother Devin used to want to go to the shop, you know. He, uh, he, he would go with dad every day. I didn't want to go though. The welding shop was dirty, it was hot, it was so uh, crude. It was just a metal building with open doors. Uh, and it, when it rained, you know, or hailed or whatever, there was plenty of water still getting in the building. But, uh, uh, and, and I thought it was so awful being there during the summer, of course, you know, that's when school's out, so we're there in the summer. But uh, uh, my dad and my uncle, they had welding trucks and they loved to fabricate. You know, my dad was a brilliant fabricator. Uh, companies would, uh, like one time, uh, one time a company needed a, a bucket. Oh, I got it here somewhere, but my, my dad, the company needed a bucket, right? A special size for that trench. And they didn't have it in town or couldn't find one. So they just told my dad, start building it. And uh, he literally built a, a bucket with perfect bushings, perfect everything. Built the whole thing from scratch. And uh, that took him, you know, three, four days at least to put everything together. But it was faster than they could get a new bucket from any other state. And uh, things have improved, you know, we can get things a lot faster these days, but uh, my dad was always the guy they called for difficult and perfect sort of fabrication and work. Uh, but the, the mainstay of our business was uh, pipe, or yeah, pipe on, and heavy equipment. Uh, dad had, you know, he, his second welding rig, uh, we used to call this one truck one because uh, 
and it wasn't even the first welding truck, but uh, he was proud of that truck. I mean, he had a 400 amp welder on the back, which was pretty unusual. And uh, uh, he, he went on many job sites. Our, our claim to fame as a family is uh, dad and Uncle Bill, even me and some of our employees, uh, uh, we did pretty much every, every one of the reservoirs around town. Now the reservoirs are those big, huge, uh, closed water containers, but they're all cement. It's kind of like an underground football field and they're full of water. And the, what the water district does, they pump water into those reservoirs all night long. And so in the morning when everybody is starting to take their showers and everything, there's a massive uh, availability of water that's all gravity fed into the town. And most people are kind of unaware of that. Uh, and I don't know how much water flowed in and out of those reservoirs, but our job was to do all the pipes connecting them. Uh, 36 inch pipe, 42 inch, 48 inch pipe, uh, 60 inch pipe. Uh, I remember pipes bigger than we could stand. We couldn't stand and reach the top. It was very large pipes uh, that we have done around Las Vegas. It's impressive. Uh, my dad was always the expert in town on these bigger pipes. Uh, I know that many companies, if they had a regular welder, often they wouldn't use their regular welder. They would call my dad in or my uncle in uh, for anything difficult or out of the ordinary because it was more like a sure thing. Uh, one of my favorite moments was uh, uh, seeing, seeing one shot, uh, one, one intersection, one job was they had a whole bunch of pipe laid out ready to go and the plan was that on a specific day they would shut down the water about 10 p.m. 11 p.m. at night and all these different welded pipe connections had to be complete you know down in the ground so that the water could go back on and imagine the difficulty for all these neighborhoods if these 40 inch pipes weren't connected back, you know, when the time came. So, uh, sure. So my uncle and my dad worked on those fittings. They custom made the T's, they, you know, 40 inch pipe into T's, 90's. They custom made some of the pipe and uh, connected everything that they could so that they could drop it in on schedule that 10 or 11 at night and uh, sure enough I mean it was it was 11 12 13 welded joints in in that hole and we had to have that thing on sure enough the sun came up and that pipe was on the water water pressure was up uh, before, you know right when the sun came up it was impressive and uh, uh, that's that's the kind of pros I mean very few people could be counted on at that level of stress. And, and it just seemed like my dad and my uncle just took it in stride. And they, they probably didn't show very much stress. <laughs> my uncle, he, he was like a hillbilly from Virginia, you know, red beard, welding hat, big guy. You know, uh, you wouldn't want to mess with him. He looked like the classic welder. I miss, I miss my uncle a lot. I mean, he did so much crazy things. Uh, he, he built, he chopped two cars and then melded them together, he welded them obviously, but he could do anything with bailing wire and tape, but obviously he could weld or fabricate anything just to the extreme. And uh, when my uncle was younger, uh, my, my brother was like 13 years old when uh, he saw my uncle make a knife at the shop, right? simple knife because my uncle wouldn't buy a knife you can make a knife uh, uh, and that's how these guys were they didn't they didn't they'd rather have a handmade knife anyway so my brother seeing that my uncle made a knife he's he's kind of competitive so my brother's right away I'm gonna make a better knife than my uncle right and uh, 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 my dad still has that first knife uh, and it's 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 a nice knife it's it's great and then I watched my brother through the years making more and more knives, you know, working with uh, mentors, you know, expert knife makers. And he became, uh, my brother Devin became one of the knife, uh, best knife makers in the world. He still is, of course. Uh, amazing uh, people that I've learned welding from over the years and lots of, uh, I mean, we, 
I've calculated many times it's it's at least 30,000 hours in the in the trade it's just a lot of hours and it doesn't really even count all the hours that I've seen my dad my uncle and others do you know doing in the field uh, we did uh, you know we made a, I, I love this my dad used to make these gravel screens uh, I'll post these on in the video but uh, it, his attention to detail this was this was unseen in 75 76 77 this was top of the line you know products that my dad uh, was was able to put out um, uh, one of you know one of the jobs my dad was so fond of was uh, he was asked to do some pipe some piping in uh, Hoover Dam and uh, it was it was some very complicated pipe and, and the point was there were several there was there was a couple of pieces that had three different flanges like a Y shape but it wasn't just a simple Y or anything it was a gnarly kind of twisting Y with different flanges in different positions and my dad explained it how he got all these measurements so many times to me and I honestly I couldn't duplicate it I wouldn't understand him I still can't understand how he did it how he pulled it off but the, these pipes, you, I mean, they built them at our shop, drove them over to the dam, bolted them in, and there was not any gap of light showing in those flanges, those random spaced flanges. Of course, they were well measured and well thought out, but they fit perfectly. I mean, if you understand anything about just temperature changes, that would give you a sixteenth of an inch variation in these faces. Uh, face of flange and my dad still yet had everything perfect uh, even e even the pipe in the dam may not have been perfect but he was able to make everything fit perfect which is is pretty amazing uh, there's many other stories I wish I had time to tell you all the stories uh, but uh, my dad's still around thank goodness uh, I love my dad uh, what a, a hero you know he taught me many things you know my uncle taught me many things. My own brother, Devin, taught me many things. Lots of the employees that we've had over the years. Uh, now, you know, somewhere, somewhere later on, you know, in, uh, in 2005 or six or seven, I, I began to take more of a management role at my dad's company, Certified Welding. Uh, those were good years. Uh, Mom was there. Dad was there. Uh, we, we, did everything. Uh, we did all kinds of jobs all around town. Uh, things eventually things started to point towards the internet. You know, we b began to have a much stronger ranking. Well, we were always number one. Let's put it that way. We were always number one on Google, but uh, it started to matter more and more. Is what I'm really getting at. And uh, so we started to see more jobs from out of state. Uh, these people who didn't have any connections in town, we began to get more connections and jobs here in Las Vegas from the internet, and uh, uh, that was kind of a good change. Um, uh, you know, after you know, after my mom died uh, a few years back, uh, my dad basically took care of her for several years and kind of got out of shape, and uh, so. Uh, you know, so we, we basically, uh, we, we, I started managing the whole company and, uh, but uh, some, some big jobs that we did, uh, one major job that we did in, in 2013, we did a, a very big job. We did uh, uh, 300 miles of power poles between here and Ely. Whatever that distance is, we, we built, we welded on power poles from here to Ely and that was quite an undertaking. We had uh, 12, 13, 14 welding trucks, 25, 26 welders and other employees, um, millions of dollars worth of welding. That was, that was kind of eye-opening to me, uh, what these bigger jobs are like. I enjoyed it. You know, we, we did everything on time, ahead of schedule, actually. Everything passed off. Everything was uh, acceptable, and uh, that's the best you can hope for. I mean, imagine dirt roads for miles and having crews out there 
organized and materials and supplies and uh, you know get everybody back to the hotel at night and uh, those kind of uh, scenarios engines blowing out tires blowing out all kinds of you know sabotage even lots of crazy stories went into that job but uh, that was a great experience uh, uh, we worked with uh, Tiberti construction I'm you know that that sweatshirt they gave me at the end of the job I can't believe that's one of my most proud moments but uh, my name certified welding with Tiberti constructions logo in our partnership on that powerful job that was uh, that was good uh, so where are we today well welding Nevada I started that uh, my, my, my accountants told me change the name let's get a different name it's important and so we started Welding Nevada, and uh, we we've, we've had some challenges. You know, things change over the years. You you know, it's hard to explain them all, but you know, you have to be able to adapt. You have to be able to change. You have to be able to progress, and that's what we've been doing. And so the natural flow of things. Uh, you know, in 2014 we had. This is important to mention. We had. A community night every single Thursday night all through 2014 and we invited anybody that wanted to come in the community it was hundreds of people at times I mean almost every single Thursday night was a lot of people lots of people practicing welding making steps making stools making uh, all kinds of projects and you know basically all for free and it was, it was fun and we got to know a lot of different people in the community and I think from that point on, Google started, uh, basically they decided that we're a school or something, probably because it was Welding Community or Weldcom, we called it, and so Welding Community got a lot of uh, um, uh, credibility, let's say, you know, on Google. And so ever since then, we just turned lemons into lemonade and all these phone calls about having a school you know, let's, let's do something with it. And, but now I understand these students, these young guys, they need a place to go. They need to learn the trade. Us older guys, we need to share that with these young guys. We need to share our knowledge before it's gone. You know, maybe some of my dad's knowledge will never get it back. My uncle's knowledge, we're not going to get it back, all of it. You know, but we're going to try. Uh, anyway. I'm, I'm really excited. We're going to close the building this week. We're going to get it, get the school up and running. Opening day, September 14th. I'm thrilled. This is like a new transition for us. I'm sure it's going to work. We're going to make it work. It's been working for over a year. Uh, I was instructor at a different school and it's working. So anyway, uh, that's a little history. Uh, uh, man, there's a lot more stories I'd love to tell you. Anyway, uh, I appreciate you checking out our video. Appreciate you looking into our uh, welding school, looking into our uh, into our history a little bit, and appreciate this. Uh, and uh, I want to thank you. And, and that's it.